Hello and welcome back fellow path integrators. Today's integral is a beautiful combination of a square root and a sine function and we're going to use some wonderful trigonometric identities to solve that integral. So we're not going to shoot at this integral with a substitution or with integrating by parts or any other fancy integration technique. We're going to use some good old fashioned trigonom trigonometry. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the sine function, of course, and we're going to use a um, addition theorem to rewrite the sine function kind of. So we can say that sine of x is equal to the sine of x half plus x half. And this we can use a addition theorem that is, looks like this. We have sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x times cosine of y plus sine of y times cosine of x. And if we plug this formula into this equation, sine of x half plus x half, we would get that sine of x can be written as two times sine of x half times cosine of x half. So now let's take a look at the whole thing that is written under the square root and the integral. So we have 1 plus sine of x and now using sine of x is equal to 2 times sine of x half and times cosine of x half. We will get that this is 1 plus 2 times sine of x half times cosine of x half. And this looks a lot like a binomial formula. And in order to transform this into a binomial formula, we're going to use the second beautiful trigonometric identity, which is that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. And we can also write that, of course, with x half being the argument of the sine of the cosine. So sine squared of x half plus cosine squared of x half is equal to 1. So this one here will be this one. And this means that 1 plus sine of x can be written as sine squared of x half plus 2 times sine of x half cosine of x half plus the cosine squared of x half. And this is the binomial formula that we were looking for because this is simply sine of x half in brackets plus cosine of x half, close the brackets, squared. And that is the whole function that is written under the square root. So the integrand was 1 plus sine of x and this is equal to the square root of this squared term squared term in the uh, uh, under the square root which is sine of x half plus cosine of x half and now we can just drop the square root and we get sine of x half plus cosine of x half and this is the function that we need to integrate and this is super simple. So what we have is the integral from 0 to pi over the square root of 1 plus sine of x dx is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x half dx plus the integral from 0 to pi of not sine but cosine of x half dx. So now we simply need to integrate those simple functions. So what we do is sine of x half the integral. So let's take away the limits for a second. Sine of x half dx is equal to 2 times minus minus 2 times the cosine of x half and the integral of cosine of x half dx is equal to 2 times the sine of x half. So now we plug that in into the integral so we get that zero from uh, that the integral from 0 to not pi half, I'm sorry, only to pi. The integral from 0 to pi 
over sine of x half dx is equal to minus 2 cosine of x half being evaluated at the limits pi and 0 and this is minus 2 times the cosine of pi half plus 2 times the cosine of 0. So the cosine of 0 is 1, the cosine of pi half is 0, so what we're getting here is 2 as a result. Now the second integral was from 0 to pi over the cosine of x half dx, which is 2 times the sine of x half evaluated at the limits pi and 0. And this is simply 2 times sine of pi half minus 2 times sine of 0. So the sine of 0 is 0, so we're just remaining here with the 2 times sine of pi half, and the sine of pi half is equal to 1, which means that the whole integral is equal to 2. And as a result, we will get that the integral from 0 to pi over the square root of 1 plus sine of x dx is equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. So I hope you liked uh, the way we solved this integral for a change, not with some fancy integration technique. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see the proof for the two trigonometric identities that we have used. And uh, if you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe to my channel. Would be cool to have you on board, my fellow path integrator. Yeah, that was all. So have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye.